here we are, the source of all Street Fighter strategy, Capcom headquarters in Northern California. Okay, so you played Street Fighter 2 Turbo on the Super NES system, or the Special Champion Edition on the Sega Genesis system. You've gotten pretty good. But, since you're a cut above most players, being pretty good doesn't cut it. To be the best, you could have spent a fortune you don't have learning the moves on your own in the arcades. Or, you could have spent time you don't have figuring out the moves off the printed page. But you've decided to check out the strategy video instead. Because we're not just going to show you combinations and strategies for both the Super NES and the Sega Genesis systems. We're going to find out ways to make you think like a winner by talking with experts on Street Fighter strategy. Like this guy, Tomohira. Tomo's the number one ranked Street Fighter player in the U.S. And he's created most of the combos and strategies on this tape and we're going to meet him. Let's go. As you can see, they weren't exactly expecting this. Uh-huh. You can learn the basic moves that we'll be talking about by reviewing the manual that came with the game. The characters you'll be seeing on screen appear in the same order in the manual. Cool. By the way, these combos and strategies are for intermediate and advanced players. But, with a little practice, anyone can learn from them, no matter what level you are at right now. So don't be discouraged if you don't get this stuff on the first try. Because, hey, you can always rewind this video and review, right? You can always rewind this video and review, right? Check out some of this introductory stuff while I dig up an expert. Introductory stuff. These moves will work regardless of which direction your character is facing. Remember, the examples you are about to see are in slow motion. So when you actually play, you have to do them much faster. For the purposes of this video, these punch buttons will be referred to as jab, strong, and fierce. These kick buttons will be called short, forward, and roundhouse. Ducking and standing kicks or punches will be called low and high kicks or punches. And now here's our first Street Fighter warrior. This is no time for false modesty. After years of devotion and self-denial, my offense and defense abilities are flawless. Observe my improved fireball, the unequaled power of my dragon punch, and my hurricane kick, which is indestructible for brief moments and which I can now execute in mid-air. Little wonder that I am grand champion of all Street Fighters. For those who would oppose me, I feel only pity. You can use this combo on big characters. Jump at your opponent with a late fierce by hitting the fierce button at the last possible moment before contact. Add another low or high fierce, then a fireball directly after that. Here's the replay. Attack your opposition with a late fierce, then follow with a low forward kick. Then set your hurricane kick in motion with the forward button. Here's the move in real time. Get as close as possible to your opponent, then jump with a late fierce punch followed by a low forward kick, followed by a dragon punch. This powerful big character combo has been formulated exclusively for this video. Jump at your opponent with a late roundhouse kick. Then as soon as you land, jump again. On your way up, hit your opponent again with another roundhouse, then immediately follow with a hurricane kick. To help you with the timing, here's the replay in real time. This is another big character move. Jump at your opponent with a late fierce punch. Strike again with a high fierce, then decimate your enemy with an immediate hurricane kick. Against Dalsim, get as close as possible and throw low short kicks. Here's what happens when Dalsim tries to attack. Dalsim's only alternative is to drill, but if he tries that, counter with a hurricane kick. This is one of the rare instances where an early fierce is called for. In this big character move, you will jump at your opponent and press early fierce. Thinking he can counter you, your opponent will try a move, never suspecting that you will go into a hurricane kick in mid-air before you land. 
And now the replay. After knocking down Ken or Ru, jump in with a short kick. When you land, perform a jab dragon punch. If your opponent blocks it, he will usually try a lower roundhouse kick as you land, but you'll be just out of reach. When they miss you, you can use either a low roundhouse kick or a throw. When you knock down an opponent, wait for the exact moment to jump in with a short. When you land, either immediately throw or execute a low forward fireball combo. I found somebody. Eric Suzuki is a Street Fighter specialist here at Capcom. He's got a special Rue combo for us. And what's it called, Eric? It's called Rue's Triple Hit Dragon Punch, Danny. Here, cut to a game screen and I'll talk you through it. You got it. Jump at your opponent right behind the neck with the roundhouse, landing on the other side with the late fierce. Then do a jab dragon punch. It's good for three continuous hits. Here's the move in real time. That was great. Hey, thanks a lot, Eric. Hey, no problem. So, I hear you know Tomo. Are you kidding? Tomo and I are like that. I'm sort of like his Yoda when it comes to Street Fighter. I taught him a lot of his cooler moves. I mean, you can't really see me, but I'm over here to the left. Yeah, right. I'm right here. What I lack in speed on the ground or in the air, I make up for in attack power. I, I also have very good reach on jump kicks and standing roundhouse, rendering much punishment to my enemies. Mm. Also useful are my grabs, an invincible sumo headbutt, not to mention my famous hundred hand slap. Yeah! This is another big character combo. Jump at your opponent and hit high with a late fierce punch, then a high strong, then hit low with a low fierce punch. Jump at your opponent with a late fierce punch, then press the strong punch and jab buttons repeatedly as fast as you can, activating the hundred hand slap. This costs an opponent a lot of energy to block. If at all possible, use this move after you knock your opponent down. Press the forward kick button when you jump behind your opponent's neck. When you land, immediately execute a low forward kick while hitting the jab and strong punch buttons rapidly and repeatedly to do the hundred hand slap. Here's the move in real time. E Honda may be down, but he isn't necessarily out. Get up again with the sumo headbutt by pressing the jab button. When you see an opponent charging at you, counter the attack by pressing forward and the jab button at the same time. Jump behind the neck with the forward kick button. At the precise instant that you land on your opponent, press high strong, then throw your opponent immediately. Keep your opponents guessing by performing the first two moves, but finishing up with an unexpected low fierce punch when your opponent stands up to try to throw you. Some find my looks disturbing. Though I move slowly on the ground, I am quick in the air. When I use my rolling attack, I become a human projectile. Well, almost human. And my vertical rolling attack allows me to knock those rash fools who would oppose me out of the sky. My lower attacks have an excellent reach. Use my electricity move whenever possible because even if an opponent blocks it, it takes off bits of his energy. 
No wonder my enemies fear me. My bite is worse than my bark. This move works especially well on big characters like Zangief and Sagat. Jump at your opponent to hit with a late forward kick. As you do, pull back on your joystick to prepare for the rolling attack. Upon landing, add a low forward kick and then begin a rolling attack by moving your joystick towards your opponent. Here's the replay. Jump at your opponent with a late fierce. Then with your joystick in neutral, press the strong punch button. Then move your joystick down and finish with a roundhouse kick. For Blanca's rolling attack fake out, press back on the joystick for two seconds. Then simultaneously press the joystick forward and the jab punch button. The jab will ensure that you will only roll a short distance towards your opponent, putting him or her on the defense against a roll that never comes. You will stop just short of your opponent and then press fierce to bite. Now here's the replay. Here's a variation of the rolling attack fake out for opponents slightly farther away. Go through the same procedure, holding the joystick away from your opponent for two seconds. But when you press forward on the joystick, hit the strong instead of the jab button. Then press fierce to bite as before. Blanca's vertical rolling attack fakeout is guaranteed to keep your opponent guessing and on the defensive. Do a vertical rolling attack by pressing up on the joystick and pressing the forward kick button. When your opponent blocks the vertical ball, you take one step towards him, then bite him again. Here's the replay. Hey James, Eric said I'd find you here. I'm Danny. Oh yeah, hey, you're the guy who knows Tomo. Right. Hey Tomo, you know this guy, right? <laughs> no, I've never seen him before. Mm. Well, while Tomo and I are getting reacquainted, why don't you check out some of Gal's hot new combos and strategies? Hey, Danny. Yeah? You want to play a game? Yeah! Play my offense to the max or don't play me at all. Sure, my defense is great, but we're not here to defend. We're here to win. With my sonic boom, flash kick, and these combos and strategies, <laughs> I've got an arsenal of weapons that won't quit, and I don't expect you to either. I'm just a guy who can't say no to a throw. Jump at your opponent, holding back on your joystick as always to charge up. Then hit your opponent with a late fierce. Hit the low strong punch button, then finish with a flash kick. This three hit combo should do large amounts of damage to anyone unlucky enough to be in the way. Here's the real time move. One of the most powerful combos in the game, the flash kick power combo, is really two separate moves in one. We'll break it down, learning the second half first. Be standing still. Press the joystick down and hold it for two seconds. Press the fierce punch button at the same time that you move the joystick up. Then press roundhouse kick a split second later. This produces a combination where you hit your opponent with a high fierce punch and immediately go into a flash kick. Now here's the whole combo. It's best to do this combination in the corner against larger characters. Jump at your opponent, holding back on your joystick to charge and hitting with a late fierce. Press high fierce, then immediately press towards your opponent and press the fierce punch button again. Guile will say, and if you're in the corner, you get an extra hit. This combo won't work on small characters like Chun-Li or Blanca, but is very effective against large characters. Jump in with a late fierce, then hit low jab, high jab, then finish with a flash kick.
Since Balrog is most effective when he gets up close, it's best to keep him on the other side of the screen. Throw a slow sonic boom, then follow it. If Balrog tries to turn punch through your projectile, you'll see him turn around. That's when you do a standing roundhouse kick. If he's dizzy, jump in and hit him with combos. If not, jump back and repeat the procedure. Here's the replay. Sonic boom! If Balrog jumps at you, kick him out of the air with either a high roundhouse, jumping roundhouse, lower roundhouse, or low forward. If Balrog jumps over or blocks the move, repeat the procedure. Remember, Balrog can counter these moves, so mix them up. James here is a resident Street Fighter 2 expert. Rumor has it you got a new Guile Killer combo. You got it, man. It's never been seen before a Redizzy combo. I call my Guile Double Sonic Boom Redizzy. Pull up that game screen over there and I'll talk you through it. All right. When you've got your opponent dizzy in a corner, walk up as close as possible and crouch right next to him and charge. Then hit him with a low jab, a jab sonic boom, then immediately charge up for the next sonic boom while you hit them with a standing fierce uppercut. Follow that with a fierce sonic boom and finish them off with a fierce backhand. Here's the whole combo in real time. Sonic boom! Sonic boom! <laughs> Against Zangief, throw a slow jab sonic boom and follow. If Zangief tries the slow clothesline spin, counter with a low roundhouse kick or low forward kick. Sonic boom. If Zangief does the fast clothesline spin, follow your sonic boom in with a backhand. If he's dizzy after this, jump in and combo him. If not, back off and repeat the procedure. If Zangief jumps over your sonic boom, stand by to kick him out of the air with either a low forward or low roundhouse kick, or a jumping fierce. Sonic boom. Tangle with me and you've got problems, dude. I'm fast, I've got a fireball, and my dragon punches take off loads of energy. My fierce dragon punch has an awesome reach. My jab dragon punch gets me out of tough up-close situations. Jump at me, man, <laughs> you'll be hit for sure. Plus, I got a hurricane kick that puts me right where I want to be. Close enough to do some major damage. <laughs> Offense or defense, I'm going to be in your face. Although it looks like a single move, Ken's fierce double dragon punch is really two moves in one and is one of the building blocks of many Ken and Rue combos. Get as close to your opponent as possible. Press a high fierce punch, then immediately follow with a dragon punch, hitting the fierce button. You'll be able to hit larger characters four times and smaller characters three times with this combo. Jump at your opponent with a late fierce. As soon as you're standing, hit the fierce button again, then immediately do a jab dragon punch. This combination should be good for three or four continuous hits, but does not work on Chun-Li, Blanca, E. Honda, or Bison. Jump at your opponent, hitting this precise spot at the back of the head. Then, pressing the low forward kick button, immediately follow with a hurricane kick. If timed correctly, no character can counter your short kick strategy. After knocking down a character, get in close and at the precise moment that your opponent rises, kick him with a high short kick, then a low short kick, followed by a dragon punch. Here's what happens if your opponent tries to do anything but block this combo. This is affectionately known as the mother of all cheat moves. After you knock your opponent down, you must hit this exact spot on the neck with the roundhouse button. Press the high jab as soon as you land, then almost at the same time, activate your throw. 
Thinking that you missed with your jab, your adversary won't be expecting your throw. You can also jump behind the neck with the roundhouse, deliver a standing forward kick, kneeing your opponent, then throw your adversary to the ground. This is a strategy used specifically against Dalsim. As Ken, you have an ideal fighting distance which allows you to do some damage while canceling out Dalsim's considerable reach advantage. Once you get to this distance, press a low short kick which effectively cancels out all of Dalsim's attacks except one, the jumping drill. If he tries that move, use your dragon punch. You can use the arc of Ken's Dragon Punch uppercut, which is wider than Ruse or Sagat's, to your advantage. When they jump you, you can cover more distance than they can. Always keep an eye on the distance, knowing that your Dragon Punch can be a devastating weapon. Quickness and reach are not my only advantages. My improved whirlwind kick enables me to charge in the air and begin my kick when bouncing off the wall. Now my higher whirlwind kick will foil the traps and snares set by my foes. My fireball will keep enemies off balance and my lightning kick will send many an arch enemy to the land of his ancestors. This move will only work on taller characters and may require some practice. But when it's done correctly, it can inflict heavy duty damage. Jump at your opponent, hitting him with a late fierce. Then almost at the same time as you hit with a high fierce punch, tap the short kick button as fast as you can to activate Chun-Li's lightning kick. Again, this is a combo for larger characters only. Jump at your opponent with a late fierce, then hit the low forward kick button and a high fierce punch, all in one continuous motion. Here's what it looks like in real time. Jump at your opponent with a late fierce, then press a high strong punch, immediately followed by a low forward kick. Here's the replay. Chun-Li's Whirlwind Kick now has a one second charge time so that you can charge through the air and go into the Whirlwind Kick from a wall bounce. If you wait half a second more before pressing the kick button, you'll be able to do your kick even higher than before. This move is good for at least two continuous hits against big characters and is guaranteed to cause a fair amount of damage. After you knock your opponent down, get as close as you can and hit the low forward kick button. It is important that you do this kick at the exact moment that your opponent gets up. If the kick connects, finish your foe with a high fierce punch. Great game, Tomo. Thanks. You're getting better. Thanks. That's because along with all these great strategies, Tomo's taught me a method called the TDR. Timing, distance, and reactions. You need to pay attention to timing. By that I mean the timing of your attacks and counters. You need to know your distances. Know what moves will counterattack from a given distance. Once you got the timing and distance down, you can concentrate on the R. Reaction. You need to develop reflexes so that you can react to what your opponent does automatically. So in other words, you have to practice to the point where the moves and combinations are second nature. So you can go beyond the technique and study the psychology of your opponent. Right, right. Then you can psych your opponents out with stuff you know they won't be expecting. You know, the same thing I'm always doing to you. 
starting to hate this guy. Don't worry. This tape is going to give you tons of psych-out strategies. I'm starting to like this guy. Okay, so I am not exactly what you might be calling a speed demon. I am a wrestler by nature. Good at what you might be calling getting up close and personal. <laughs> My spinning clothesline gets the results, and of course, all I need is to grab you once. Once you get a taste of my spinning pile driver, you are what you might be calling uh, Kaputsky. Jump at your opponent, and while in midair, press down on your joystick and hit the fierce button. Immediately execute a low, short kick, then simultaneously press any two kick or punch buttons to start your spinning or turbo spinning clothesline. After knocking your opponent down, get as close as possible and jump, pressing your joystick down and the fierce punch button to get behind the neck. Then press two low continuous jabs and immediately perform a spinning pile driver. This works on big characters. Go behind the neck with the fierce punch button while pressing down on the joystick. When you land, deliver a high strong punch, then a low roundhouse kick in one continuous sequence. Here's the playback in real time to show it better. You can mastermind this clever Zangi fake-out by hitting two punch buttons simultaneously to start the slow spinning clothesline. Your opponent knows that this makes you vulnerable from below the belt, but just before his attack, you will hit two kick buttons simultaneously, affecting the faster turbo spinning clothesline. This move makes you invulnerable from the belt down and dangerous to opponents foolish enough to attack you. Once they do, you're able to grab them and put them into your spinning pile driver. An essential Zangief skill is his ability to control the direction of his pile driver so that he can keep his opponent in the corner. Move the joystick in a 360 degree rotation either clockwise or counterclockwise. Zangief's pile driver will jump right or left on the screen according to the direction of your rotation. Because of my slowness and low attack power of my punches and kicks, my greatest weapon is unseen, for it lies within. It is called patience and is the key to my transcendence. My reach advantage keeps my worldly opponents at bay until sheer frustration often tempts them to make an unfortunate mistake. Ah, most enlightening. When a large opponent jumps at you from a close distance, wait until the last second to slide by, pressing the low short kick button and two low forwards. Dao Sin can drill opponents repeatedly. Try drilling two or three times before simply walking up as bold as brass to a dazed or blocking opponent and throwing him. You can use a quick, low, short kick to slide to your opponent and throw him because he's expecting you to slide long. Okay, I'm big, but don't let my size fool you. I'm fast on my feet, just not so hard in the air. My turn punch and dash punch will knock your block off if you don't see him coming. That's why I use all these fakes and attacks. Strategy is the key to my success. A few rounds with me, and most of them leave saying, I could have been a contender. Jump at your opponent with a late fierce while holding back on the joystick to charge up. As soon as you land, press the low jab punch button, then a high jab. 
Now dash by moving your joystick towards your opponent and press the short button. It's good for four continuous hits. Press and hold all three punch buttons or all three kick buttons for two seconds and then release. The turn punch is indestructible for a split second, letting you punch your way through projectiles if you wait until the last possible instant to release. You can keep your turn punch in reserve, ready to go by holding down either all three kick buttons or all three punch buttons and playing with the remaining free buttons. The same principle holds true for an even more powerful punch. Hold down the kick or punch buttons for 50 seconds, then release to do a final power punch. Jump, and while you're jumping, hold back on your joystick for as long as possible. Hit with a late fierce punch, then immediately do a dash by hitting the short kick button. This combo is good for two continuous hits. Here's the replay and the timing of the move in real time. This cheat strategy throw move takes advantage of Balrog's quickness and an opponent's tendency to block. When an opponent blocks, jump at him from a relatively close distance and hit him with the fierce punch button. Then hit with a low jab following up Balrog's dash by immediately hitting the short kick button and simultaneously tapping the strong or fierce punch buttons. You should be able to distract your opponent with a jab that never lands while you set him up for a headbutt. Notice the rhythm of the sequence in real time. I am a quick fighter and my claw gives me an extra reach that many of my opponents lack. But my hidden strength lies in patience and staying out of my opponent's reach. When an adversary becomes impatient and has the insolence to attack, ha! I counter at just the right moment with just the right move. Like my air throw. I use my off-the-wall throw sparingly, as it can leave me vulnerable. My combinations are designed for multiple continuous hits and will cause considerable damage to my enemies. This works best on large characters. Get your opponent dizzy. While still holding back on the joystick to charge, press the jab button. Then press the joystick forward while punching the strong punch button, creating the roll. As soon as you finish the roll, press strong again to punch your opponent. When in range, Jump at your opponent with a late fierce by hitting your fierce punch button at the last possible moment before contact. Immediately follow with a high or low strong and low strong punch. Lure your opponent into attacking by moving in and out of attack range. When attacked, step closer and stab. Or you may slide with the lower roundhouse. Should an opponent jump at Vega, jump at him instead, pressing the fierce or strong button and at this point, throw him in mid-air. I use these combos all the time and I know they work, so keep on practicing. What I lack in style, I make up for in power and tenacity. I am slow on the ground and air, but have an advantage with my longer reach. Unlike my opponents, I can throw both high and low fireballs very quickly. My tiger uppercuts and tiger knees are also very fast. But I must remember that my tiger uppercut is only indestructible for a split second. When you fight me, you are a rock fighting a relentless stream of water. Eventually, I will wear you down.
When you're fairly close to your opponent, jump with the roundhouse kick button, then follow that with a low short kick and a tiger uppercut. The replay will show you just how fast the tiger uppercut follows the kick. Jump at your opponent, waiting for the last possible instant before contact to hit the roundhouse kick button. Then, almost simultaneously, hit a low short kick and a short tiger knee move. When you're as close as you dare to come to your opponent, your high forward kick will hit twice. Then in one continuous move, hit the low short kick button and decimate your foe with a tiger uppercut. From a short distance, your tiger knee will let you hop over any projectiles and low attacks and allow you to get close enough to your enemy to blast him with a tiger uppercut. When playing against Balrog, keep him far away using your low, slow tiger shot fireball. If he tries to turn punch through your projectile, then use your tiger uppercut. If he jumps over the fireballs toward you, use a low roundhouse kick or high fierce punch. The main idea is to mix up the combinations and keep him off balance. My powers may have been diminished, but I am by no means powerless. Believe me, fighting with me can be murder. I can act as quickly as a fatal dose of venom, and my Psycho Crusher still incinerates my enemies. My scissor kick allows me to sail over low attacks and kick my opponents into submission. Ah, and my head stomp will allow me to dive towards the heads of my victims again for a second crushing blow. Yes, life is good. As soon as you get your opponent dizzy, and before he can get up, slide with the low roundhouse kick to get as close as possible to your opponent while you're pushing back on the joystick and charging up. Once you are up close and powered up, lash out with a low jab, another low jab, then a high jab. Then press the joystick forward and the forward kick button and clobber your quarry. Here's the replay. After stomping your opponent's head in, you can control where M. Bison lands. M. Bison will move left to right or right to left, depending on the direction of the joystick rotation. I've been discussing Street Fighter 2 with my Zen Master Tomo. You've given us some fantastic combos and strategies. Remember, to win a Street Fighter, you've got to think like a Street Fighter. Watch this and you'll see what I mean. These general strategies can make the difference between winning occasionally and winning consistently. So listen up. You have to know each character's strengths and weaknesses as well as your opponent's strengths and weaknesses. You have to know all your counter moves to any character's attack. Forget these and you can forget about winning. Know your character's prime attack distances. Each character has a distance he fights most effectively from. It depends on the character and who he or she is fighting. Be aware of energy levels during play. Always know who is winning and by how much. If you know you have a lead, then you can expect your opponent to play more aggressively and to attack more carelessly. Be ready to see your opening and go for it to increase your lead. Be aware of the clock. The amount of time will affect your opponent's playing style and yours. Be creative. Don't fall into recognizable patterns of moves. Mix things up to confuse your opponent and to make it harder for him to predict your next attack. If you can surprise yourself, chances are good that you can surprise your opponent too. Remember that throws are an important part of the game. Keep grabs as part of your offensive arsenal. Remember, there are no rules. Anything goes. Practice is all important, but only if you practice to improve. Don't be satisfied with mediocrity. Learn from your mistakes and constantly strive to keep from repeating them. 
Once a game is started, try to conservatively establish a small lead at the beginning of the round. This will usually make your opponent more aggressive and careless. If you aren't able to establish a lead, then look for opportunities to get into your prime attack distance. And finally, keep the pressure on by never letting up on your offense, even if you're winning. Follow me. I found where they've hidden the latest top secret Street Fighter development. It should be right around here. Coming soon to an arcade near you, Street Fighter 2 just got hotter with Capcom's all-new Super Street Fighter 2. The rumors are true, and entering the tournament for the first time ever are four outrageous, never-before-seen characters. Thunderhawk, over seven feet two inches of American Indian with a fighting style all his own. Cammy, girl wonder of the British Special Forces with a cloudy past. Fei Long the would-be martial arts action film star with the lethal kung fu fighting style. DJ, the musician turned warrior with a fighting style as fresh and flashy as the man himself. Enter the Super Street Fighter 2 arena and take the Street Fighter experience to a whole new level of gameplay. If you beat the rest, get set to take on the best. Watch for Super Street Fighter 2. You've got the combos, you've got the know-how. Now it's up to you to put these strategies to the test. Go for it. Yeah!